Hello, I'm Sean Campbell with the Agronomic Crop Imaging Lab at the University of Saskatchewan, and this is Plots Without Borders. We are located at the Kernan Crop Research Farm just east of Saskatoon, and I'm just going to talk a little bit today about how we've integrated some new technology to create some uh, new experimental uh, design. It's some simple beginnings back in 2013. We got our first GPS system and all we really wanted to do back then was drive straight with it, be able to grab anybody and throw them on the tractor and away they would go. We quickly realized there was a lot more potential to the system and we soon added marking plots with the system. So we would, uh, instead of using tape measures, prisms, stakes, that sort of thing, we just use the, the GPS system to mark everything out. And we found that we were able to do this a lot more accurately in less time with less labor. We then realized uh, we could also use the system to uh, eliminate some of the mistakes in the field, such as uh, these trip mistakes here. Sometimes you have late trips or early trips or completely missed trips. We put a auto trip system on the drill, which eliminated the manual trips. It was all GPS driven, so we'd set it up in the field and whenever you crossed a certain threshold, it would do an automatic trip. So then uh, whoever was on the drill at that point would only have to focus on putting the right uh, package in the cone at the right time and uh, the machine would uh, take care of the rest from there. We then wanted to get into uh, larger plots. At this point, we were doing uh, smaller plots, so a six meter long plot with a four meter pathway. Here's an example of a traditional RCBD trial that we would have done. In this experiment here, in this example, we've got six treatments and four reps. And again, we would have a six meter plot with a four meter pathway. We wanted to develop something a little bigger and a larger scale. So we came up with a Morse design, which is a modulated on-farm response surface experiment. So it would take something that looked like this fairly small and it turned into something like this. So what we did here, each pass is a rep and within each rep, we've got um, incremental rates. So starting at the bottom on pass one there, you can see we started out at a rate of three and we went to rate four, rate five, rate six. What we did after this is in the second pass, we would actually randomize it. We figured out a way that going up, we would go in increments, coming back, we would randomize. Moving to the small, or moving away from the small plots into the larger plots, though, we quickly realized that we couldn't fit the right amount of seed into our cones. Our cones were just way too small, so we had to move everything to the seed boxes and to establish that we had to manually change the zero max there on the left and go from rate to rate. We would have to stop, we'd spin that dial and then uh, carry on to the next plot, stop and adjust it. And we found in some of the jumps going from a, a high rate to a zero rate, we would have to spin that dial up to 50 times. So to eliminate that, we moved into variable rate technology. We replaced the zero max drives with these electric drives you can see on the right there. We tethered that in with a uh, Zern and uh, Harvestmaster Mirus setup. And um, what we would do is everything is GPS driven. We put all of our information into a spreadsheet. All of our layouts were done in the laboratory and then pumped into the system. Once we got into the field, again, everything's GPS driven. We basically tell the system where we're starting, how big the plots are, how big the pathways were. We hit a button and go. This is a quick video showing how the response of the motors are. As you can see here, this is a high rate. In this example, we just uh, manually switch it here to a lower one, but in the field, it's all GPS driven. As you can see here now, it's a slow rate. And in a second here, it'll switch over to a fast rate, just showing you how fast it goes.
Here's a video showing the scale of the size of these trials. So in this trial here, we had 20 strips and each plot was 11 meters long. So we went from six meter long plots to 11 meter long plots. In the video as well, you can see that there's no starting and stopping. It's a continuous drive. And again, every time the system hits a threshold or a marker, it'll switch to the new rate. Basically, all we have to do with this is make sure the seed boxes are full and that's it. So when we were done seeding, we, we were fairly confident that the, the system worked, but you never know until it comes out of the ground. This is an example of what we got in the first year right out of the gate of the, of the system. You can see in this picture here, the top line is just a check. There's no treatments here. But the second line moving from the left to the right, this is an end rate experiment in wheat where it's an increasing end rate until you get to the maximum rate and then it drops off. The third pass down is uh, just a completely randomized um, treatment there. So we got to this point and we knew the system would work that way, but we had to figure out how to spray it. We had no visual cues or pathways to drive down, so we had to decide how we were going to do that. At the farm, we were lucky enough to have a Zern 550 with a Kincaid GPS sprayer. This machine allowed us to have superior control over boom height, speed, and the key part, it was GPS triggered. It was a 16 boom system and which allowed us to spray up to 16 treatments at one trial. No rinsing in between plots. You'd basically set the machine up similar to the seeder where it was all done with spreadsheets, pre-designed in the lab and then entered into the system in the field. Again, it was all done with the Mira setup. This is a video showing of an example of how the GPS trigger is. As you enter into the plot, it fires in the right spot, sprays throughout the plot, gets to the end, and it shuts off in a designated spot. This is a video showing the inside of the cab. On the tablet, it shows you where you are in the field, the treatments you're spraying, the boom that should be triggered at the right time. This shows it's GPS driven, it's auto steered. All we basically have to do in this machine is get to the end of the row, turn it around, it comes back and everything sprays in the right spot at the right time. Moving along into harvest, we uh, have a Zern 150 and we again put the Harvest Master system on it and tethered it to GPS. Using the same uh, files from seeding, we enter it into the system. Everything will automatically cycle. It will weigh the system weigh the grain, exit it out at the right time. We don't have to worry about mixing plots because again, everything's GPS labeled. With this system as well, we're getting instant data of, we're getting yield, bushel weights, we're getting moistures, everything is geotagged and referenced. And with this machine this year, we were able to put an NIR scanner on it, which allowed us to take oil contents and proteins. It also allowed us to subsample. Moving up into a, an 11 meter plot, our yields were going to be a lot bigger with a lot more material. So this system allows us to dial in how much we want to actually bring into the lab and then it'll kind of discard the rest into the grain tank and then uh, we deal with it later. Here's a picture of some trials that we seeded and uh, put down last year. And we noticed driving by it one day that there looked like there was some treatment effects from the previous year. The next here is a video showing what we did with the experiment. Uh, this trial, we seen her, we put down all the treatments on it last year. It was nitrogen treatment. And we thought because it was such a dry year last year, we didn't really see a whole lot of response. We kind of wanted to see what was left. So what we did, we had the, the commercial guys come in and seed, solid seed this to wheat. And then I came in here using the combine with the GPS and we put in our pathways. I don't know if you can see a pathway out the window there right now. 
that was all done with the combine and uh, now we're just uh, taking the yield from it. Looking at our monitor here, the way we've got this set up using uh, the Harvest Master weigh system, it will show us our weights, our moisture test weights, and then we even put a near infrared sensor on this machine this year, which gives us live proteins as well. The system is pretty smart where we can put in the GPS coordinates from last year. The system will drive itself over the plots from last year without me having to figure out where to go. The system also will recognize where we are within the trial and it'll trip the way system in the proper spot so we don't have to worry about any sort of mixing or anything like that. For an example now I'm sitting outside of one of the plots from last year. The system's telling me I can go so I simply drive through it like typical. Once I get near the end of the plot it will show me on my monitor that I'm getting close. Once I'm through it it'll start down my it'll start my countdown which will run the system with the grain through the system do all the weights do all the measurements and once that's done it fires it all into the grain tank because we don't we're not taking any samples into the lab on this, this study. Here's a quick uh, set of data showing how this worked. So you can see in orange, it was our yields from the from last year, but it was a really dry year and we didn't have a whole lot of response. So we were able to go in there this year, combine those plots, and the data was actually really, really good. We were super pleased with it. So looking at this data, it really showed us that we could go in completely blind into a field onto some trials from previous years and collect very meaningful data. Here's another example of a commercially seeded crop. Uh, this is a grad student project where it was flown quite a bit throughout the season and they were looking at emergence and some flowering and comparing that to some yield. What I was able to do with the system here, I was able to go in with the combine, chew in some plot pathways and just start combining trial the trial from there here's a video just showing the scale of these projects here And finally, looking at some future work, we want to be able to bring everything together on this. The way this system is set up, we can have multi-level experiment design. We can have a seeding rate trial on top of a fertilizer rate trial on top of a fungi fungicide trial. The sky's the limit with this. And the nice thing with this is it's, it's all using the mirror software, right? From seeding to harvest, everything's under one umbrella. So we're not fooling around with different types of software or anything like that. It's, it's just completely uh, user-friendly and nice to use. I'd like to thank uh, Michael Bateman from uh, Zern. He was a huge part of getting this whole system set up and as well as some of the other funders here.